Good morning. Morning to the people in the building. Morning to the people who are gathering online, which I have a feeling there could be a few of today. Usually happens that way when you're doing online services and rainy days. Um, that I don't know, it's just very tempting to go, well, I'll just watch online today. So if you are, we are glad that you are and welcome, welcome. Uh, particularly welcome little Evie, who I can't currently see at the moment. I assume she's out the back. Um, we're celebrating little Evie's baptism this morning. Um, very excited to do that. Uh, we're also um, going to be sharing together in communion, and as I'll explain later, that actually is shaping the theme of our service today, where we're going to be exploring an understanding of what the sacraments are. Don't worry if you don't understand that yet, I'm going to explain it. Um, but that's going to come later in the service as well. Uh, as we start this service, I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we are worshipping on, the Durham-Urrigal people, and pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. It is um, something that we do every week here at the church, just acknowledging that we are only just a short part of the long story of exploring spirituality and connection with God that has happened in this place over um, many, many more years than we uh, as Taramara Uniting Church has been here. And so we do acknowledge them and as we worship, we worship gently on their land. Just because there's a whole bunch of stuff later in the service, we're going to... Um, do our announcements right up front and so uh, we're going to jump into those and I just wanted to wish a happy birthday to Annabelle and to Steve. Um, happy birthday. Notice that the youth groups are all in recess at the moment. Uh, so uh, Bugs which is our little kids, Tara Zone which is our uh, primary school age kids, Square One, which is our youth group kids, uh, because of school holidays, will be back on, I think it's the 22nd of July. Uh, but for the, for the high schoolers, they're actually going to be doing their camp um, straight up. We haven't been able to run our camp program for the last couple of years, so we're very excited that we're coming back to be able to do that. Uh, this year, the Tara Zone have already had their camp, kids camp out, it was good and uh, we're looking forward to Breakaway, which is soon. Uh, likewise, our playgroup is also in recess at the moment, but that will be back uh, for Term 3, I think it's about on the 19th of July. Uh, we had a huge night here last night for our trivia night, which I'm going to get Max to share in a moment, but um, if you missed that, don't worry, the dish has got one coming up soon, which I think is sold out, so bad luck you missed out on that one as well. Um, yeah, Tuck and Friends morning tea. Just noticing my formatting didn't work there. It's very frustrating. Um, that's this Tuesday at 10.30. Normally Tuck and Friends is in that room, but we're in the lounge this time because playgroup's on recess. And actually, I'll come back to that. Do you, you want to jump up and do uh, how did we go last night? I'll invite Max to come up. Hello everyone. Um, yeah, so last night this whole room was, all these chairs were pushed out of the way. There was tables everywhere, there was lights going crazy. Um, we had a marvellous trivia night which was run uh, by a bunch of young adults here. Uh, I think we had about, I think about 80 people sort of-ish around. Um, it was a great night of, of friendly competition and, uh, and some very difficult questions, um, but some just great knowledge all around. Uh, we were raising money for a bunch of new uh, music gear to be used uh, across all worship services at the church. And I think uh, we raised $2,364, which was just absolutely marvelous. Um, it was fantastic. So a massive thank you to the young adults who made that event possible, and a massive thank you to everyone who came along last night. Um, it was just a, it was a marvelous night, um, one that we were very, very proud of. So thank you for that. Um, if you weren't able to make it last night and you would like to make a little donation, I'm going to be out in the kitchen a bit later on. There's still a couple cookies and snacks that were baked for last night, which is still on offer if you wanted to pick any of those up. Um, or if you just wanted to have a chat, I'll be out there. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Max. It really was a good night. 
Um, uh, if you're looking for the tap machine, it's out there at the kitchen. I've already got it out there. Um, and so I think your goal was around about $3,000. So they're about $634 short. Is that my maths right? Um, so if you uh, wanted to give a donation towards the music year, um, yeah, Max will have the, the tap machine at morning tea. I think that's, oh no, one last announcement. Um, just giving some hints about what's coming up soon in worship. Uh, next week uh, we, will be a, um, a special service. It's actually my 29th wedding anniversary next Sunday. And so we're going to be talking about love. Um, and you will get to see something that Mar and I don't show off very often. Um, if you're wondering what that is, you've got to come next week. It is, it, yes, it, 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 it will be good. So we'll talk about all things love next week. Uh, the week after, we're inviting uh, missionaries Ben and Antonia Wilkins to come and share with us um, about uh, some of their hopes and dreams and also how we can be supporting people who are um, doing missionary work. And so that will be our focus on the 17th of July. And I just wanted to start reminding you that on the 24th of July uh, is our combined worship service. We only do this uh, once or twice a year. And this will be our big service where we uh, not only do a whole bunch of stuff in worship at 10 a.m., but we will have our annual general meeting afterwards, followed by lunch. So that's in uh, three weeks' time. Speaking of people supporting those people who are doing mission work, uh, just as we prepare for our singing, we're going to hear a couple of minutes from Isaac, who's a member of our evening congregation, who is currently doing some work over in India. And so I asked Isaac to send me a video, and he did. So here's Isaac in India. Hi, Taramara Church. This is Isaac. I'm not there because I'm over here in India. And uh, Phil just asked me to say why I'm here. Well, I'm here at the moment with my friend Sajeev. He's a really cool guy. He lives in Vijaywada. And I come over and visit him and uh, help him out with uh, some of the stuff he does in his ministry, which is a lot of social enterprises. Um, one of the things I really like that he does is after-school programs to help the kids study and, get, and try and do, develop their future a bit more. He also helps out with some struggling poor families and widows and different um, poorer villages and things like that. Um, so that's why I'm here. You can see there's a beautiful village there behind me. And uh, Sajee's trying to start a new after-school program in a village. So he's just doing a little event here that we're kind of doing today. So there's all these kids. Namaskara! Namaskara! Namaskara, yes, we're in the Telugu area. And um, yep, so the kids are there and they're having a bit of fun. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna work out soon. And uh, Sajeev always tells me he wants to have a team from Australia come. Is that right, Sajeev? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. He'd love to have a team because then we can go and do some, yeah, yeah, yeah. some skits yeah, yeah. in some villages about health. Yeah, yeah. And we can have a lot of fun. And he's got a, a spare room already set up. So if anyone's interested, let's, uh, let's make it happen. Okay, well, have, have a nice time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Sorry I missed the trivia night. I hope it was fun. Bye. Bye. That, that's very Isaac, if you don't know Isaac. <laughs> um, so as we are exploring uh, God's love and grace today, one of the ways we do that here in church is that we um, sing worship songs. And I'm going to hand over to our um, Mel and our band over here who's going to help us do that. If you don't know the songs, that's fine. Uh, read the words, um, but I'll hand over to Mel. <laughs> Mel. Get the right one. Thanks, Phil. Uh, if, one thing I like when I'm listening to the radio is uh, what they call a mashup. I don't know, you'd say too old for a mashup. I am. But a mashup is where you can get bits of songs and put them together and make a whole new song. They're quite common on the radio that uh, you take a, an older song and a new song, stick them together, change the beat track, and you've got another song that you can sing along to. This one is a bit of a mashup. From old and new, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, now found. I was blind, but I can see. Let's stand and sing together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Grace, my fears relieved. How precious to that grace appear. The hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed. Sing, how great 
Sorry, I missed time my walk back to the front. Um, I was just getting the colouring in for the kids. I'm going to explain that later on, um, how you can do that. But today, as I said um, at the beginning, we're learning a little bit about the sacraments. Now, the sacraments is a weird religious word. Uh, it's a fancy name that refers to a symbolic action or a ritual that we do here in church uh, sometimes, you know, churches have lots of sacraments, like I think the Catholic Church has got seven sacraments. Uh, here in the Uniting Church, we have two sacraments that we recognise, two important rituals that we do in, in the life of the church. Um, one of them is baptism, which we're going to be doing today with little Evie, and one of them is communion, which we're also going to be doing today. And so today we're going to be learning a little bit about them so that we can not only learn about baptism and communion, but also experience that as well. But we do lots of things in church. So you may be wondering, what is the difference between, say, saying a prayer and a sacrament? What, what does sacrament, uh, what, how do we define a sacrament? Well, the official definition is a sacrament is something that Jesus specifically asks us to do. So, for example, Jesus says in Matthew 28 to go and baptise people in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And Jesus says in Luke 22:19, when he broke the bread and shared the cup, he said, do this in remembrance of me. So Jesus specifically asked us to do that. But also a sacrament is something that helps us experience God's love and grace in our lives. It's a, it's a point where we can recognise that God is with us and that there is something mysterious about a sacrament that we can't quite explain that God is part of that. So when we pour the water in baptism, not only is it physical water, there's something about that that reminds us that God is indeed with us, that God's hand is upon us, um, offering us love and guidance and grace. Is this making sort of sense? Well, it doesn't matter because we've got a whole service to explore this. Um, but first I'm going to pray and then we're going to jump into it. So let's pray. Almighty God, how wonderful you are. Creation shines with your glory and your greatness. Each tree and flower are filled with your wonder and beauty. Each animal and person resounds with intricacy and miracles. And this morning we praise you, our wonderful, majestic, awesome God. As we worship today, as we learn about and experience your love and grace for us, we just want to pause to thank you for your love your love that never fails. Even when we fail you, you love us unconditionally. We thank you for the comfort of knowing that we are secure in the promise that nothing can ever separate us from your love. So God, open our eyes today to see your truth. Open our ears to hear your invitation to come close and open our hearts to receive and feel your love and grace today. Amen. So it's looking like Evie's a little bit more at home now. That's great. Today is a special day because we are celebrating little Evie's baptism. 
A baptism is where we welcome somebody, in this case, Evie, into the faith and the family of Jesus Christ and promise to help Evie on her journey with Jesus. Journey. Journey is almost this buzzword now, isn't it? That we use probably a little bit too often that we're on a journey. We're on a journey. And sometimes it can lose its impact. But I really do want to talk about journeys today. So just because I'm using that word, don't tune out because I'm using the word journey. journey. So what is a journey? A journey is a process of getting from point A to point B. A journey, it's sometimes helpful to know when you're, where you're going, but sometimes you don't. <laughs> sometimes you have a purpose or a reason to go on a journey and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you journey with other people and sometimes you journey alone. Today, I'm going to use a gimmick to be talking a little bit about journeys and using this gimmick to explore the symbolism of the sacraments, the baptism communion. Have you already worked out um, from my advertising what my gimmick is? I'm going to be using some clips from the animated children's movie series Shrek. All the clips that I'm going to show today are from either Shrek 1 or Shrek 2, because let's be honest, it sort of peaked at Shrek 2 and then went downhill from there. And we're going to watch a short segment, and um, I'm going to ask some questions after it. So watch it, because I'm going to ask some questions. Now, I've got to say, for the people who are watching online, I have a feeling that I'm pushing the boundaries of copyright here. So I'm not going, you're not going to be able to hear this video because I don't want to get pinged. Um, but I have put sound, uh, subtitles on the clips. So if you think that the sound has dropped off and something's gone wrong, no, we're purposely turning off the sound for these clips. Um, and so you can just read the subtitles. But you can still answer the questions when we come to it. So you ready for the first one? All right, let's jump into it. Um, here is Shrek. People. All right, so hopefully I'm back being able to be heard by the people online. So I've got three questions before we get to Evie's baptism about the clip. So you ready? I'm hoping that somebody can give me the answers. Who was on the journey? Who was it? Shrek and Donkey. Excellent. Shrek and Donkey was on the journey, but why were they on the journey? What was the purpose of the journey? That's the third question, um, but yes, you are right. But how were they going to do that? They had to rescue Princess Fiona, 
And what was the reward? Yes, they wanted to get the swamp back. And so there was a purpose for the journey, a reward for the journey, and um, Shrek and Donkey were on that journey. We're going to hear our Bible reading uh, just before we have the baptism. And I'm going to ask similar questions at the end of the Bible reading. So I want you to listen to the Bible reading that Alison's going to read out. And I'm going to ask the questions like, who was on the journey? What's the reward on the journey? Um, that makes sense? To give you hints, I've highlighted some of the answers in yellow. So not only listen, look at the screen and you'll see some of the answers. Thanks, Alison. The reading is taken from uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 3, and reading verses 7 to 14. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to sh suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already re reached perfection, but I press on to, to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Thank you, Alison. I think after everything that I tried to do getting the right translation, I still put the wrong one on the screen. So sorry about that. You were right. <laughs> All right, here's my three questions. So who was on the journey with Paul? Did you pick it up? Anyone? Paul said he was on a journey with Jesus. That Jesus was on the journey with him. What was the purpose of that journey? That was the first yellow one that I highlighted. To know Jesus. That was the journey, uh, the purpose of the journey. Paul said, I want to know Jesus. And what was the reward? Well, in this particular reading, he said the reward is heaven. But I want to suggest there's a whole lot more other rewards to knowing Jesus than just heaven. Things like love and grace and help and guidance. So we're just about to baptise little Evie. And in baptism, Leander and Andrew are acknowledging that Evie is starting her journey with Jesus. And they are accepting the promises that come with that on her behalf. So are we ready to do this? I'm going to move across. I'm going to invite Leander and Andrew and little Evie uh, plus the godparents, um, plus Mark, who's going to be representing the congregation for us, to all come forward.
Sorry, I turned myself off. You can hold her for the moment if it's easier. <laughs> Andrew and Leander have come today to present their daughter, Evie Joy Quaken. Have I said that right? I forgot to check beforehand. Evie Joy Quaken for baptism. So, Andrew and Leander, what do you ask of God's church for Evie? In the light of the covenant promise and of your request, I ask you now, do you believe that the good news of Jesus Christ enables people to walk away from their old life and turn to a new life with God? Well, Evie, may the Lord open your ears to hear, receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise. At a special moment like this, it's important for all of us to affirm the faith in which we were baptised. And so I'm going to ask us to um, stand and on the screen are the words of an old creed written nearly 1,700 years ago. And if you would like to read this, read this with me, um, uh, that, that would be great. You okay? We're going to keep going. All right. Do you believe in God who made you and loves you? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, your Saviour and Lord? We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. I ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit and the continuing work of our salvation? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the worldwide church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to get Mark to pour the water into the baptismal bowl, and as you do that, um, I'm going to pray over it. So let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gifts of water. In the beginning, you moved over the water, bringing order out of chaos. From the great floods in the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark. Through the Red Sea, you led your people to freedom from slavery in Egypt and across the river Jordan, you led Israel to the land you have promised. In the waters of the Jordan, our Lord was baptised by John and anointed by the Spirit. So by the power of that same Holy Spirit, bless this water and this child who is to be baptised in it, that she may be born anew of water and the Spirit and be raised to a new life in Christ and grow up to follow in his way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Is Evie going here right now? Yeah. <laughs> well, Evie, for you Jesus Christ has come, has lived and has suffered. For you he's endured the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you he has uttered the cry, it is accomplished. For you he has triumphed over death and for you he prays at God's right hand. All for you, little Evie, even though you do not know it. Do you want this? In baptism, the word of God is fulfilled that we love because God first loved us. That's all right, you can play with water now. Do you want to play with this? It's still warmish. If not, someone's going to have to hold her. <laughs> Beautiful. Just feel this. That's all right. 
Well, Evie, I'm going to baptise you. You may get wet here. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Evie Joy Quaken. <laughs> oh. Do you want me to hold you? Do you want to come to me? I've done this before. <sighs> here we go. Evie Joy Quaken, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There we go. I liked how she was trying to push me away as I was doing. Evie, I'm going to put the sign of the cross upon you to remind you that you are and always will be part of the family of Jesus Christ. Do you want to wipe yourself? <laughs> Evie is now received into the worldwide church according to Christ's command. I'm going to invite us to say together a blessing which is up on the screen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I'm going to invite the band to come and speaking of traditions and rituals, yes, you might. Oh, we do that after the song. You can go and sing and come back. Um, one of the traditions we have in this church is that every time a child is baptised, we sing a particular song. And so we're going to sing that song now. And godparents, I hadn't given you the heads up of this, but as we do this, are you able to walk just up and down the aisles and let people say hello to Evie. Is that all right? So I'm going to invite you to give her a wave, uh, give her a smile, welcome her into the worldwide family of the church as we sing um, the song. Thanks, Mal. Night is gone and the morning comes. Little one, we welcome you. The family of God's Son, little one, we welcome you. We consider God's holy image in you. Cross and glory is a living story with a place for you. We'll keep the fires bright for this holy light, heaven's gift to us and trust. Now to respond to God's graciousness 
to Evie by making these solemn promises. Will you provide for your child a Christian home of love and trust? Will you set before Evie the example of a Christian life and will you pray that she will learn the way of Christ? Will you encourage your child to grow within the fellowship of the church so that she may come to faith in Christ? And I ask the godparents, uh, Jonathan, who couldn't be here today, Amanda and Kerry, will you encourage Evie as she grows up? Will you love her, support her, pray for her and be there for her in her life and faith journey? And I charge the people of this congregation and all those who are gathered here today to maintain a life of worship and service that this child and all the children amongst us may grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the knowledge and the love of God. I invite you to respond to the words on the screen. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Christ, nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer and encouraging one another in service. I'm going to invite Rachel to come up and to pray. Let me grab a microphone for you. Uh, let's, am I on? Yeah, it's on. All right. We'll come on. Uh, let's pray together. Uh, loving Father, we thank you for all you have done for us. We thank you for the life of Evie and the joy she brings to those around her. Thank you for her smile and laugh and curious nature. Father, we thank you that you know her and love her deeply. We ask that um, she would come to love and know you and follow Jesus as her saviour and king. Thank you also for your love and goodness to Andy and Leander. Please help them to raise Evie and help them to keep the promises they've made today. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to light the candle because, Evie, you belong to Christ, the light of the world. And so this candle will remind you that may you always walk as a child of the light. Let your light shine before the world so that all may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And Mark will also present you with a little gift of a book and of your baptismal certificate as well. Well, shall we welcome Evie into the faith and family of Jesus? Thanks, guys. You can sit down, and when you sit down, you can blow out the candle too. <laughs> well, that was special, wasn't it? So, um, I'm going to keep speaking just for a little bit more, but if the kids wanted to, up the back there, there is some colouring in of both uh, the sacraments, so communion and baptism, but also a Shrek. And I have bought new Play-Doh. So you know how the old stuff was getting a little bit crunchy? Um, I've got new Play-Doh up the back there too that you can go and play. So just the table over here, if you wanted to head over there, grab some stuff, you can either do it over there you can bring it back to your seat, whatever you want, but there's a whole bunch of stuff over there for kids to uh, look at and to enjoy. We all get that? Yep. So in response, I've just got one more little thing that I'd like to move through as we look, think about our second sacraments for today, which is communion. If I ask parents... Um, whether your kids are still young or whether they were young at some point. What's one of the things you get asked on a car trip if you're going on holidays all the time? Are we there yet? Yes. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We're going to watch our second clip from Shrek. Once again, the people watching at home, you're going to lose your sound for the next couple of minutes. Um, this is a great clip from Shrek 2. Thanks, guys.
I'm embarrassed to say that I'm having copyright problems. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so a good clip for those people who are able to watch it in the building. Um, as we read in our Bible reading today, Paul says we're on a journey with Jesus. But Paul recognises, are we there yet? The answer is no, not quite. We're still on the journey. We're not there yet. Paul says just because he's on the journey doesn't mean that he's finished the journey. Just because he's got to know Jesus a little doesn't mean that there's not more to get to know Jesus more. In that reading, I'll just put up on the screen those key verses again. Paul says, I haven't yet already obtained this. I'm still pressing forward to achieve the goal that I'm trying to achieve, which is to know Jesus more. I think when it comes to baptism, we need to recognise that baptism isn't the end of the journey. It's only part of the journey that we are on. The journey keeps going. There's people in this room who have been following Jesus, getting to know Jesus for, what, more than 50 years? And they're still on the journey. And they're still on the journey. I hope uh, we talked about this in our uh, interview that we had, uh, our little checking in beforehand. The baptism, I think, is a bit like when we baptise um, little Evie. It's a bit like getting a gift certificate that God promises to share love and, and uh, guidance and grace with little Evie. And yes, that is true right from now. But we hope that Evie, a bit like a gift certificate, has got a lot of value later on when we cash it in. We really do hope that Evie will cash that in and accept the promises that Andrew and Leandra has made for her today in some point in the future. So if Paul says we're still on a journey, uh, what, what do we do on that journey um, that might be helpful in us getting to know Jesus more? Um, is there things that we can be doing, um, you know, things like prayer or reading the Bible or helping and caring for those around us or standing up for those who face injustice? All those are good things that we could be doing but Jesus also knew that on the journey we were going to need some sustenance for the journey. One time uh, he was talking to a woman next to the well. Oh no, not that one. Um, this one. And Jesus said to her that if you knew who I was, you would ask me for life-giving water. And I can give that to you, water for refreshing of your soul. At another point he said, Come to me if you're weary and I will give you rest. The other sacrament that we recognise in the Uniting Church is the sacrament of communion. And I actually think communion is a bit like journey to sustain, uh, food, spiritual food to sustain us on our spiritual journey. It's when we're opening ourselves up to receive some of that life-giving water that Jesus offers us. I think the sacrament of communion... Um, I had a lecturer one time in my, when I was at Bible college who said this line. He said, in communion we have a rare opportunity not only to think about God's love for us, but to actually hold it in our hands and to feed from it and let it quench our inner thirst. Can you see how it's more than just having knowledge of God's love? In a sacrament we can actually experience God's love and grace for us. There's a little bit in Shrek 2, uh, just before they drink the potion from Happily Ever After. Watch the show if you don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, but Shrek's just about to drink this potion, and Puss in Boots says to him, if you drink that, it could change you. Well, it, that's the whole point of it, isn't it? And I guess that's the same when we come to the communion table. We almost need to put a warning, warning. Participating in this could change you. When you open yourself up to God's love and grace, you could be changed. 
we become more grateful, thankful, and in return, more loving and gracious to others. So how are we going on our own journey with Jesus? We're going to move into a time of communion in the Uniting Church. Everybody is welcomed at the table. It's up to you to decide whether or not you wish to receive communion. Children are welcome at the table if the parents um, are happy for them to receive. Anyone who is here is open to receiving communion today. If you're comfortable with receiving, then you are welcomed at this table. As we draw close to this table, it's important for us to remember the story behind it, the way that the sacrament started, that Jesus at that last supper, the night before his death on the cross, he shared a meal with his friends. It was a special Jewish meal called the Passover, and it consisted of roast meat, herbs, bread, and back then it included wine. And Jesus knew that he was just about to die on the cross and that dying on the cross would forgive people's sins. And yet still on this night he was very sad. And during the meal he said, I very much wanted to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Uh, before I suffer. And Jesus was talking about his death. He picked up the bread. I just need to uncover this for the moment. He picked up the bread and he said, and he broke it, and he said, this bread is like my body, which is broken for you. He said, whenever you eat of this, remember me. And in the same way, he picked up the cup and he blessed it and he passed it amongst his disciples, his friends, and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you. He said, every time you drink of this, Remember me. And so that's what we're going to be doing today in this meal. We're going to be uh, eating of the bread. We're going to be drinking from the cup. And in doing so, we remember what Jesus has done for us and give thanks. I'm going to say uh, a, a prayer. And then we're going to say at the end of the prayer, the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen. So let's pray. Lord God, we do thank you for your love. We do thank you for all that you've done for us. And this morning, we particularly thank you for the bread and the juice. So Holy Spirit, come down upon uh, these sacramental gifts, the bread and the juice, that they may become for us symbols of your body, symbols of your love and your grace. We pray that in eating it, we may remember Jesus and give thanks for what you have done. We pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite the stewards to come out. We're going to set up two tables at the front here with the bread and the juice on it. And then I'm going to invite us to come as we are. We're going to sing our song as we do this. And I just invite us, if you'd like to, to come forward to uh, you'll receive a bread and uh, one of the little cups. Um, you can just take it back to your seat. And when you're ready, eat the bread, drink from the cup, and remember what Jesus has done and give thanks. Um, part of that sitting in your seat is what I said before about holding that love and that grace in your hands.
you'd like to, um, I invite you to come forward.
Let's just pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for what you've done. We thank you that through the cross and your resurrection, our sins can be forgiven and we can find life with you. We thank you that you give us the opportunities to know you and to journey with you as friends. Amen. We've got one last part, and for the people who are cluey, who are normally part of the worship service here and going, where does the offering fit in? I remembered I was supposed to do it at the beginning of the service. <laughs> uh, we're going to do the offering at the very end of the service as we leave, because we don't necessarily have another song to put that in. I apologise for that, Keith. Um, is that all right? Uh, we'll just have the offering bag at the back table on the way out. That's the best I can do at the moment. All right, we're at the end of our service, and uh, I wanted to make one last point. We've talked a lot about journeying with Jesus, uh, not just me, but Fiona in that clip that caused me copyright problems also talked about journeying as well. She said that uh, it's important to remember that we're traveling together. It's important and helpful to have friends on that journey. I was going to show another video. I'm glad I cut that one out now. <laughs> um, but I'm going to tell you about what I was going to show you. Um, it was at the very beginning of Shrek, like in the first 10 minutes of Shrek 1, just after uh, Shrek rescues Donkey from the soldiers by being a scary um, ogre. Uh, and all the soldiers run away, but Donkey follows. And they have this conversation um, about why is Donkey following Shrek. And uh, he goes, he starts to sing the song, but you've got to have friends. And Shrek says, but I'm an ogre. Doesn't it bother you? And Donkey says, no. Shrek goes, really? And then that great line, yeah, really, really. <laughs> And all Shrek can respond is, oh, and they walk on together. And I think it's important for us to realise that friends on the journey are really important. Just as Shrek and Donkey and Fiona and Puss in Boots helped each other on their journeys, we need to do that too. Today when we baptised little Evie, we baptised her into the faith and family of the worldwide church. And it's a recognition that wherever Evie goes in life, whether that's here, whether that's elsewhere in Australia or anywhere in the world, she has got a church there who is ready to help and to love and to pray and to support her. What was the promise that we made on behalf of the Worldwide Church before? Do you remember it? I'll put the words back on the screen because it was really good. We said that with God's help, we promise to be a loving community. We promise to nurture one another. We promise to uphold one another in prayer and to encourage each other. One of the ways that we do that here at Taramara is that we run a whole bunch of programs to support and encourage one another. Things like uh, Tara Zone, Playgroup, Tara Tots. Uh, we've also got uh, social gatherings, Bible studies, and of course Sunday worship. But we do also commit to pray for each other. And Anne, are you going to introduce your prayer? And I'm just going to introduce the last thing we're going to do, which is our last song as well, um, is, is a way of us not only praying for each other, but praying for the world. So I'm going to hand over to Anne. Yeah, when I was thinking of the prayer today, it just occurred to me there's a few people that I love who are sick at the moment. There are a few people that I love who've lost people. There's just, and there's stuff in the world. And I was struggling to find words. And then I went, no, here's a song that really helps us to pray this. So we're going to replay a recording that our family did during lockdown. Um, and as the words come on, I just want you to think of the people that need that prayer. And it also encourages us as we go out into the world with our friends and our family, as Phil's just said, we can be strong and courageous because we have our God with us. So let's pray. Be 
It really has been an exciting morning gathering today, um, celebrating not only Evie's baptism, but sharing together in these sacraments of baptism and communion. This journey will continue as we walk out the door. Our, our journey with Jesus will continue. We have not reached the final goal yet. We're still on the journey. So as we leave this place, I wanted to leave one last thing with you. I've actually written, rewritten part of our Bible reading from Philippians chapter 3, but I wrote it in a way that it reflects our own church family here. So I just wanted to read these last words as we finish our service, um, an adaption of Philippians 3. Our church is a great church family. We should be proud of where we have come from and what we have done, but let's not dwell on the past. The future is still before us. Let's keep focused, not standing still, but moving forward. Let's get excited by what God is doing and the amazing things which are just around the corner. Let's give all we have as we walk this journey together. Let's get stronger and stronger as we get closer to the end time, where we will all receive our reward, being with Jesus and each other forever. But let's keep moving forward, helping each other on this journey to the glory of God. Amen. So as we have witnessed in the baptism of little Evie, and as we go, may we live out our baptisms. As we journey together, may we all be assured that Jesus is with us, that God's love is for us. Let's celebrate the fact that we are together on this journey. And may the blessing of God be with us all. Amen. We've got um, some great morning tea out in the lounge just out there. As I said, the offering 
uh, will be up the back there as we leave. So we walk out there around down the hallway to the, um, to the lounge for morning tea. For those people, if there's still anyone watching online, I think you switched all over to YouTube. No, I think they're all on YouTube. Um, sorry that it's been a bit of a muck up today. I'll learn my lessons and not try and cheat the system. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to show an outro. Uh, it probably would be better for the people online than the people in the building. This is, it's actually in NADOC week just about to start. Um, and this is the Uniting Church's uh, contribution to NADOC week. There's just a lot of speaking, so we may not be able to hear it in the building, um, but the people who are still watching online will enjoy that as the outro. Uh, but otherwise, please join us for morning tea. Yama, welcome everybody. Um, I thought I'd just record a little video for NADOC Week 2022. So what is NADOC? The acronym stands for National Aboriginal and Islander Day Observance Committee and today represents an opportunity to celebrate the history, culture and achievements of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. NADOC has its origins in the Aboriginal Civil Rights Movement of the 1920s and 30s that led to one of the world's first civil rights protests in Sydney on the 26th of January 1938. This protest involved people marching through the streets and was followed by a congress of over a thousand people. It is known as the Day of Mourning. The Day of Mourning protest and congress resulted in a resolution calling for new laws for the education and care of Aboriginal people and for a new policy which would see Aboriginal people be raised to this is a quote, full citizenship status and equality within the community. There were other outcomes from the day of mourning. A deputation led by William Cooper was sent to the Prime Minister, uh, Joseph Lyons. The delegation presented Lyons with a proposal for a national policy for Aboriginal people. This was rejected because the government did not hold any constitutional powers in relation to Aboriginal people. Another outcome of the day of mourning was that the day became an annual occurrence held on the Sunday before Australia Day, in recognition of the terrible treatment of Aboriginal people and the resulting loss of culture and identity following the colonisation of Australia. The Australian Aborigines League was able to persuade many religious denominations to declare that the day, Aboriginal Sunday, serve as a reminder of the unjust treatment of Aboriginal people. Many churches still recognise and hold services for Aboriginal Sunday. Aboriginal Sunday continued to be commemorated throughout the 1940s and 1950s. In 1956, it was decided that the day should be broadened in its focus, not to dwell purely on protest, but also to celebrate the diversity and vibrancy of Aboriginal culture. The day of mourning was changed to Aborigines Day and moved to the first Sunday in July. In 1957, it was decided that uh, with the support and cooperation of state and federal governments and churches and major indigenous organizations that a national aborigines day observance committee nadoc uh, was established to organize and oversee the celebration of national aborigines day which was moved to the second sunday in july in 1974 the nadoc committee became comprised solely of aboriginal people and in 1975, the committee decided to expand the day to a whole week of celebration. In 1991, NADOC was expanded to recognise Torres Strait Islander people and culture, becoming NADOC, N National Aborigines and Islanders Day Observance Committee, as we know it today. Around this time, the committee also decided to choose an annual theme to reflect the most important issues or events each year. NADOC Week is a great opportunity for non-Aboriginal people to learn more about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. Just Google NADOC events in Sydney or in the area you live to see what events may be on during NADOC Week. This year's NADOC theme is Get Up, Stand Up, Show Up. The NADOC website explains this year's theme and it says, We have a proud history of getting up, standing up and showing up. From the frontier wars and our earliest resistance fighters to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities fighting for change today, we continue to show up. Now is our time. We cannot afford to lose momentum for change. We must continue to get up, stand up, show up, 
for systemic change and keep rallying around our mob, our elders and our communities. Whether it's seeking proper environmental, cultural and heritage protections, constitutional change, a comprehensive process of truth-telling, working towards treaties or calling out racism, we must do it together. It must be a genuine commitment by all of us to get up, stand up, show up and support and secure institutional, structural, collaborative and cooperative reforms. It is also time to celebrate the many who have driven and led change in our communities over generations. They have been the heroes and champions of change, of equal rights and even basic human rights. Getting up, standing up and showing up can take many forms. We need to move beyond just acknowledgement, good intentions, empty words and promises and hollow commitments. Enough is enough. The relationship between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and non-Indigenous Australians needs to be based on justice, equity and proper recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander rights. Get up, stand up, show up with us to amplify our voices and narrow the gap between aspiration and reality, good intent and outcome. In 2021, that's the end of the quote. In 2021, the Synod approved the Walking Together Action Plan, which includes a range of practical steps that congregations, presbyteries and the Synod can take to engage with and support First Peoples. The Walking Together Action Plan can be viewed and downloaded from the First Nations Resources page on the Synod website. Just Google First Nations Resources UCA and the link to the page should show at the top of your search result list. The First Nations Resources page also contains a great range of learning resources and I encourage people to visit the page and look at what is available. Uh, my contact details are also at the bottom of the page if anyone has any questions or would like support. So, yep, get out there this NAIDOC week, go to your local events, meet some people, learn some stuff and have a good time. Um, thank you and have a great NAIDOC week.